Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are things? Doing wonderful. In the middle of a nice, beautiful snowstorm. I have read about this. I don't wouldn't know what that is. It's like 68 here and <laughs> beautiful. Dude, buddy, the nightcap OG. Also probably having some horrible weather. Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great. No snow, but uh, minus 30 wind chill in the last few days. So wonderful. <laughs> wow. I no, prefer the snow. <laughs> how can you possibly say wonderful to that? You know, another day, another day of being alive. There, yeah, there you go. We got Taria. Paradise. Wait, can I do my intro? We got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are things? <laughs> Better than negative 30, so I'm great. Good, good. We got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I can't complain. Good to see you. And of course, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. I can't complain. I am very excited about this week's roundtable topic. So well, it's right I mean, in, it's right in qualified it, it, to answer this question, honestly, is Eric Peterson, like the rest of us. I know we should, like, let's just, let's just, let's just serve it up to Eric first. <laughs> should we? I mean, who, who else can even answer this question and, and like do it professionally? I don't know. Only Eric can do this professionally. We can all do it in an, our own amateur way, but only Eric can answer this professionally. So the question is, Scott Todd, if you're not a graphic designer, what do you recommend as far as setting up a website and a landing page? Is that the question? Well, that disqualifies Eric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's the question. As that's I remember, question. Now Eric can't answer. Okay. Which and so we, let's just skip Eric for this one. We'll, we'll have him go last. So Mike Zeno, you're not a graphic designer. No, I'm not. you don't play one on TV. No, nope. you want to set up a website, you want to set up a landing page, what geeky tech tool would you use? Would you use a geeky tech tool? How would you get that done? Who, not how? Yes, who, not how? I would go find somebody and, uh, you know, my go-to platform, you know, there's two of them that I like. One of them is, uh, um, you know, Upwork. We talk about that quite a bit. I'd find someone there. And then there's the one-off gig, which is Fiverr. Um, so, you know, I would just go to one of those sites and put together what I'm looking for and hire someone. I, I've experienced much and way too much frustration over the years trying to like educate myself and, you know, and become like a, a mock graphic designer or you know, one, you know, in a, in a one day course. And it, it doesn't work. It's just such an exercise in frustration. Um, I'm not willing to put in that kind of crazy time and effort when I could be doing something better for my, uh, not, oh, that's wrong. I don't want to, that's digging at graphic design, not something better, something better for me that I feel more enjoyable. So I would just go hire someone, Mark. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, dude, buddy, Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, what about you? Well, I guess early on, um, I was really focused on other aspects of the business, and I probably would not have done what Mike said and gone to hire somebody out right away. That being said, there are some really amazing tools out there right now that are really easy to use, like... You can create a landing page on MailChimp or ConvertKit uh, per property, make it look really nice and professional in a matter of 10 minutes and use that to steer some of your clients toward. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, I, I think there are a lot of great, uh, great tools out there today that you can spend 10, 15 minutes on to create a great landing page for your properties. You don't need a website to start. I think a website eventually is helpful for legitimacy, for telling people who you are, for housing some testimonials, for housing some of your inventory, uh, that type of thing. Um, that being said, I am not a graphic designer and I did most of my website back a few years ago. So I don't think, uh, now I think Eric would beg to differ. He probably likes a very well-designed, beautiful website. 
but we've sold a lot of property without a very beautiful website. So, see, and that's that's really what matters is, and and that's the thing is like our customers don't want a, a beautiful website. I would almost argue that Eric's beautiful website is probably hurting him in sales, as opposed to like <laughs> a website that just looks, um, you know, a little bit less for lack of a better word, let's just call it pretentious, right? Um, Taria, put in the, in the rep terrace. How about you? What would you recommend? Uh, so kind of what we did, we went on Upwork and found someone who could put together, you know, what we wanted. And it was just a base like WordPress. Um, but we also baked in her providing training. So we wanted videos of how to do the maintenance and, you know, just small things, create landing pages um, and all of that. So we did hire someone, but then we got her to train the person that is going to continue to keep the website up to date moving forward. We didn't want to, she wasn't available to do it. Neither did we want to pay that fee. So we found someone less expensive who now goes in and makes sure as new properties are added and sold, it's updated. So I agree that's with brilliant. Scott. It became, it became a headache though. I agree with Scott because now you have this extra piece. There's no point in having it if you're not going to keep it up to date. So now you have extra work that you have to do to make sure that it's relevant and current. Um, but yeah, we hired someone and had her train the person to take it over. Yeah. I mean, but what's brilliant about that is you're outsourcing, you're outsourcing, mm -hmm. which is really efficient way to do it. And you know, you can certainly keep a few properties up there. I don't think they need to be current. Um, you could just say, oh, yeah, we haven't updated that. It's sold. We have something similar. But it's, I really feel like for our niche, it's just about credibility. Somewhere right. to get another, another opportunity to get somebody on your email list, another opportunity to build rapport maybe with a video about what you do, your why, your purpose, your mission for doing the business, another opportunity to showcase testimonials if you have them. Uh, but that's really it. It's not like mm -hmm. we're not going to out land moto land moto. We're not right. spending that kind of money to drive traffic to our website. So um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think I had a point, but I made it. So now I'm going to segue over to <laughs> Scott Todd. And I mean, didn't you just say it all? Like you just stole everybody's thunder and then <laughs> what, we're going to put Eric last too. Jeez. I, I would just say like, there's, you know, you don't have to be a graphic artist to go do this stuff. Okay. Uh, there's been a lot of great ideas surfaced already in terms of using landing pages, et cetera. The, the very first property that I bought, I bought from a land investor. And when I asked him like, Hey, do you have a website? He told me, yeah, go, here and he literally sent me to to the properties they had listed on one of the lands websites that's what he did like that was his website so you don't have to put in the infrastructure unless you really want to remember this though the thing that i always talk about in this business is simple simple beats complex and that's the way it is with every business but in this business it's even more true because as you said mark you kind of hinted at this our buyer is typically not a sophisticated buyer, right? Like our buyer is somebody that they like simple. They like working with you, not a bank, not a big company. They, they don't want that polished look. What they want is they want to know you. So ultimately it doesn't matter if it's sophisticated or not, or ugly, ugly, ugly sells in this business, believe it or not. It's the craziest thing. It defies logic, but that's the reality of it. Also, remember, it's about value. It's about adding value. So how can you add value to somebody and giving them property information, et cetera? It's really about the value of it. And for those of you that are listening to this, you can go to this website. Go go look at this. This is, it's ref, that's refdesk.com. It's just one word, refdesk.com. And this website is basically, it is, what'd you call it, Mark? A dial back to the 90s? I think yeah, it's, you... like, it's, a, it's like a time machine in 1997 GUI. Right. But that being said, to your point, it gives a lot of value. Value. Remember value. Everything you're doing has got to have value. No value, no bueno. Yeah. So 
Eric, I think this is your opportunity to actually get a little geeky, though, <laughs> and give the listeners who m might be interested in having something that might be uh, a little bit more polished or a little bit more creative, where would you go? What tech tools or websites would you actually recommend people would go that don't want to outsource it like Taria and, and Bossman did and um, create a, a beautiful website if, if so, you know, they, they want to do that? I think first I want to say, you know, to me, this question sounds like, you know, someone that's maybe just getting started in the business and they feel the need to have a website. And we hear that over and over. And I just want to reiterate how I think every one of us on this podcast agree. You don't need a website to sell land. Um, I had a student who was very successful. Uh, he, they, he went through flight school, went through coaching all that time and never had a website. And um, he's doing, he did very well then and he's doing very well now. He does have a website at this point in time, but it wasn't a priority. The priority is doing the basics and building the business and building the business doesn't really involve building a website, okay? Now, I fully admit when I got started, the most important thing to me was to have a logo and to have a website. My background is in graphic design. I, I couldn't overcome it. So I spent a lot of time doing that stuff that in all honesty, I could have spent doing other things in, in the business, building the business, hiring VAs, making systems and processes, et cetera. Um, so even though I did it, looking back, I would, I would still try to tell myself not to do it um, because it wasn't the right time to be spending my time in that aspect of the business. With that said, um, someone that just absolutely feels the need to have a website, um, whether they're just in flight school or they're further along, I would recommend, you know, maybe just using a landing page on the platform that you're using to manage your, your email marketing. If that's MailChimp, if it's ConvertKit, if it's something else, that's already gonna be there probably for free as part of your account. And, you know, we talk about landing pages for a property, but there's no reason you can't build a landing page for your, your company, right? And have your video on there, have your story, whatever you want to have, and use that to promote your business to those people that, you know, ask you for a website and you feel like you're lacking if you don't have somewhere to send them. Um, and the reason I would say that is because you could probably do it quicker, whether you hire someone to do it or whether you do it yourself. Um, it's not going to be a big investment of time. Um, so, so that's where I would start now. You know, in terms of building a website, um, there's many platforms out there. You know, lots of people will use WordPress or um, Squarespace or, or some of those other um, tools out there. I don't think it really matters. I think probably, in my opinion, the, the most important thing is that if it's not your expertise, outsource it. Don't try to spend time learning to do something that, in reality, you don't really need to know how to do in this business, mm -hmm. okay? So focus on, again, buying and selling land because that's where you're gonna make your money and pay someone to build the website. Don't, don't spend your time doing that. Yeah, it, it's so funny. And, and even if you're not in the land business and you're listening to this and you're just entrepreneurial, a website doesn't make you any money. A paying customer is what you want. You want, that's what you want. You want to do the hard things of what does that take to do? In our business, the hard thing is buying an asset 25, 30 cents on the dollar. In another business, it might be something else, but the website doesn't help you do that. And the website doesn't help you sell either. So I remember uh, I had, we had early, early on boot camp. I think it was like Scott Todd's boot camp. I had somebody in, in, the, uh, in the room say, oh, I, I really need to have a website because I don't feel like I'll be a professional without it. And I just said, look, you're not a professional until you sell something. 
That's what a professional does. So a website won't make you a professional. And I think they went out and sold some property. <laughs> then, then they could do it. Um, I thought it was a good, a good discussion. Uh, Scott Todd, any last thoughts? I, I think what you just said is perfect, right? Like the, the reality is, is that it's so easy for, for you to pretend to be in business and not be in business. And the only thing that makes you in business is that you have something to sell, right? Like you're not in the land business until you have some land to, to sell. Well, go get some land and then sell it and then do it again and do it again and then do it again. And then someone might say to you, well, do you have a website? Not yet. It's okay to be honest with them. Not yet. I'm just getting going. Okay. And then get some money. Go then go get a website. And you know, don't don't look for perfection. Just ease into it. Remember, any website that you go to of an established land seller, that you don't know what page they're on. And what I mean by that is they've been doing this for a while. So you can go look at somebody and go, wow, look at look at look at this website. Do you even know what the first one looked like? You're looking at version 55 potentially versus version one. So it's okay. You'll get to it, put on the list and then come back to it. But I do agree with what Eric said. If you're not a graphic artist, a graphic designer, then go, go get somebody else to go do it for you. Because guess what? I can spend three hours making a logo and I can go to Eric. Hey, Eric, what do you think about this? And Eric's gonna look at it and go, um, who did this? Oh, me, it doesn't look great. He's gonna be like, no, it doesn't look good. How long do you take to do this? Oh, three hours, Eric. Isn't that fantastic? Dude, I can do way better in 15 minutes. You see, like somebody who has the knowledge can do faster and look a lot better than I can. So don't waste your time. Don't play business. I love it. I love it. Well, we're at that point now in the Roundtable podcast where we get to ask Taria for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, it's something else actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Tria, what do you got? Okay, so I was doing some digging and a pain point for us, especially when we're hiring on new VAs, is coming up with catchy deal of the week, you know, email titles. Um, so there's this new company called Swifter that will generate email titles for you. Um, it's not a new company. It's, they're offering this as a new service, I should say. But I, what I liked about it was you can ask a lot. It asks a lot of questions like what type of communication is this going to be? B2B or, B2, or business to business or, you know, business to your clients or your customers. Um, you get to choose your product or your brand. You get to provide a description of, you know, what it is the email is going to be about. Um, and then you choose the type of email. Is it friendly? Is it bold? Is it professional? And, the, and then it will build several different variations of an email title. And you get to kind of go in and pick and choose which one you would like. So they are offering it for uh, free for now. Um, you have to sign up for an account and all of that good stuff. But I thought it was pretty cool. So is it Swifter? Like S-W-I-F-T-E-R dot... Oh, here it is. It should be Swifter HQ, I think. Okay, I just want to get this before Scott Todd gets it. Uh, I almost... <laughs> if you... <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah. It's Swifter HQ. I almost okay, bought a mop. I was at Swiffer. Don't yeah. worry, Swiffer. <laughs> Swifter. Swifter. Yes. All right, I'm, set... I'm doing it right now. Excellent. Save in one password. Save login. Create account. Okay, done. Beat you to the punch, Scott Todd. Did you? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? He's already sent out five emails. <laughs> I know. He's like, have you not realized that like all of the tips of the week come to me first? And then we, when I say, okay, then, then they're shared to you. <laughs> there is a vetting process that happens. <laughs> I did not you realize, not realize that, that protocol. No. <laughs> no. So every time you say, I got to get before Scott Todd, I've had it for a week when I got to prove this thing. All right, whatever. Well, 
That's a great tip. Um, I'm going to give a bonus tip of the week as well because it's just on my mind. But before I do so, I have to give a sponsor, a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income machine quickly, safely, efficiently. Go up the mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. Talk to Scott Bossman, Mike Zano. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training and find out if this niche is right for you. Oh yeah, and by the way, that uh, tuition investment, it's not gonna cost you anything because we guarantee you're gonna make back that money 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, so I have a second tip of the week that I have been playing around with now for the past week. It is an app. And I really hate to give out any type of app because of uh, Eric Peterson. Um, that being said, I'm kind of enjoying this app. It is based on a, um, a thing called Bhutan, like a Bhutan ritual, B-H-U-T-A-N. They're one of the happiest countries in the world. And it is a reminder that we are mortal. And so the app is called We Croak. And so five times a day in the spirit of Bhutan, it reminds you of your mortality and gives you a quote regarding your mortality. Taria, it's not morbid. We're all gonna die. <laughs> it makes you more grateful like, oh, I'm alive. Oh, wow. Okay. In Bhutan, they say contemplating death five <laughs> times daily brings happiness. I see. It says, we croak. Don't forget, you're going to die. Open for a quote. <laughs> Here, okay, here's the, here's the quote I'm reading right now. Here, this is from Zadie Smith. His death is like the soft down on the back of your hand, passing unnoticed in the firmest of handshakes. Though the slightest breeze makes every damn one of the tiny hairs stand on end beautiful it's life affirming <sighs> oh boy this is quite interesting it's quite I'm, interesting I'm, i don't know if i want to download them I'm, I'm on the edge yeah i got it i'll check it out and let you let you guys know it's a free app yeah it's we'll, we'll have to check scott's mood over the next couple days right it's a, when it's I a free me, app that just reminds you every day, five times a day, that you're going to die. Like, how does that bring yeah. you happiness? Because it is life affirming that you it be in the moment. Don't take this all for granted. Scott Todd, you're going to die. Listen, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this <laughs> app and five times a day when this thing goes off to remind me that I'm going to die, I'm going to tell my wife, remember, I'm going to die. Be nice to me. And my kids too. And guess what? They're going to hate me for that app. It's going to make my life miserable. <laughs> and they're going to be like, enough already. Would you I, die already? <laughs> I know you're angry at me, but look, I'm going to die. Right. I get a pass. I, I, I don't think I don't think in Bhutan this is how they use it. You're you're really you're really making this a very Western American thing now. What do they do in Bhutan, Mark? With a little sprinkle of guilt, like oh, don't make fun of my donut, I'm gonna die. Yeah, they don't do that in Bhutan. They contemplate it silently. You know they don't they share it with their with others. Let me ask you a question. Do you think they eat donuts there? <laughs> no, they don't eat donuts there. You know, I think the same company is coming out with a mirror when you get in front of it. It says. Man, you're not going out in that, are you? You're fat. <laughs> you look you're not wearing that today, are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> look, you could use this app. If it reminds you, every time you get this reminder five times a day that you're going to die, post an ad. Now you're posting five ads a day. See? It all works into the land. You're going to die by land. That could be a You're going to die by land. It's the only thing that lasts. I, you know what? I'm going to. I bought the. Uh, the premium version, I can make my own quotes. I'm going to put that one in. Oh you there can make is. your own quotes. Yeah, I can make my own quotes. Well, Zane will love that. Yeah. 
So um, I thought this was a good podcast. I want to thank the listeners for putting up with our shenanigans and remind them that if you're enjoying the shenanigans, just do three little things for us. You got to subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. All right, are we ready? Yeah. All right, one, two, three. Let's Let freedom ring. Not bad. So I've oh, been trying to figure best. out this ref desk. What is it? I've been sitting here trying to figure this ref desk out. It's somewhat confusing. What, what is this all about? Okay, well, think of it this way. It is, it is the, as the title says there, the fact checker of the internet. So in the center column, you have featured resources. Mike, you should love this one. It's the site of the day. It's nice. a fact of the day. Okay. The thought of the day. I mean, nice. if you're ever on a pinch, you know where to come for a, deal, a tip of the week right here. Okay. Book of the month right there. Article of the day. What happened on this day? You know, more information on today's history. Today okay. is William Harrison's birthday, by the way, 1773. Did you know that? No. It's got links. It's got, you know, all kinds of stuff. You can, like, pull anything that you need. You need to have a random trivia generator because you need it. Well, guess what? You just click on the random tri trivia generator and let's play this. Um, the Broadway hit Rent translates what opera into a greenhouse village. La Bohème. La Vie Bohème. La Vie Bohème. And the answer is, I don't know, because I don't know how to work this website. <laughs> I lost it. Wait. It's wait, La Vie Bohème. I can't Random go back trivia there. Generator. Okay, all right. In the movie Dirty Dancing, what did baby carry? Oh. I'm not to work the website now. What did baby carry? In the movie Dirty Dancing, what did baby carry? What's Where's that? Baby? Where's my Jeopardy? No, no one watermelon. puts no one puts baby in a corner. Yeah. Well, she carries a watermelon. If someone asks Mike Zano, you can't do this one though. If someone asks you for your ten twenty over a CB radio, what are they asking you for? Location. 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 All right. Now we're now we're talking. See, Mike, you can get all of this and more all from this fantastic. I love it. 1987 integrated website. And at the very bottom, it says in big, bold letters, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, you know what? <laughs> we'll all visit Bhutan. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. They're very happy that it is. Bhutan. 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 I don't know. Um, Eric, you've been very quiet about ref desk. What do you think of that? How's that? Wait a Would minute. you ever? No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, 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 I see what you're doing here. Okay. You're not. What am I you're doing? You're trying to project your crazy tip of the week off to something I mentioned, like as if Mr. Jot Not Pro is going to like let you pass on that one. This is. Mark's jot not pro, if you ask me. <laughs> Gonna die five times a day. Tria, we help me out here. Uh, the website, the it, it's a ton of information. It, it's, I wish it was organized a little better, but it's a lot of good information. Mark, I do have a question for you. The five times a day on your app, are they spaced out evenly throughout the day? And then as you get closer to death, they go faster? <laughs> So like if you get one a minute, does that mean you're in your final final five minutes? Like <laughs> just asking for a friend. Yeah, it's uh <laughs> it, it just reminds you. Well, man, if it's timed out space throughout the day, how do I know that I'm really gonna get my five messages today and I'm not gonna end up with three or two or I only got well, one. I got you, none. You just gotta check your notifications. You know what I think is I have to have to actually have to even check it because I always have my phone on do not disturb. So I don't get the like the little pop-ups, the little you know the noises. That's how happy oh, I am. The point. the point is, is that I think, oh, I'm gonna die. You guys have an inspiring quote five times a day and contemplate it. I see a little I, bit. 
Oh, it. Oh, wait, I need to pick up my phone. I didn't remember I was going to die. So let me but, get a quote. Uh, of the get six a, of us, uh, of the six of us, of the six of us, guess which one of us probably complains the least. Well, my husband's not here, so I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm emailing Landon right now. It's me because I have the most gratitude towards my life because I'm contemplating death all the time, unlike you guys in denial. So do you think you reach a point where you're thinking too much about death and you're not really enjoying life? Like enjoying the moment, the now? That could make you want to eat all donuts all day. Like, I'm going to die. I'm going to eat donuts croissants. all day. Croissants all day. <laughs> like you're debating to get it or not, then you look down at the register and your phone says, you're going to die. I'll take the croissant. <laughs> <laughs> There there might be something to that. Like I have a feeling next week when I look like Elvis right before he died, it could be because of the We Croak app. But who knows? Maybe not. All right, Scott Boston. No, I mean, uh, you know, two things on this call. You were telling us about your new your new uh, croissant fad or donut fad, and you got this new app. So I'm just wondering, you know, maybe they occurred concurrently. You got the app, and your donut consumption went up. And it's, uh, okay, first of all, I'm not eating donuts. The app's working I'm no, against I'm no, you. I'm no, I mean, I'm it's not like Scott welcoming Todd. death. Yeah, I, no, no, no. The croissant is a, from a patisserie. It's saving me a trip to Paris, and it is pure, right. unadulterated joy. Okay, it's not like, you know, I go to the, 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 the quick trip, like Scott Todd, and, and order a, a gas station quick donut. Trip. I get a Krispy Kreme donut, thank mm. you. <laughs> it's Krispy <laughs> Kreme, baby. This thing, yeah. This even, thing, even worse. It could be consumer-based. I mean, like, you're, at, you're, you're booking a flight, you're going to die. I'll take first class. You know, it's like I'm overpilled. I'm filling up my gas tank. You're gonna die. I'll take the premium. <laughs> no, if you're gonna die, you're not taking a premium. <laughs> you're taking the low lead, baby. The 87 octane. I only got to make it a couple more miles. Don't fill it up. <laughs> Hold on. The the kids are gonna have to put gas in this baby on their own dime, not mine. Yeah, can we get ice cream? No, you're gonna die. Let's go. <laughs> It is a contemplative practice. It is spiritual. You guys are making this the most Western thing ever. Yes. You know, you know who I'm going to Bhutan with? Tate Litchfield, who's not on the round table. Me and Tate are going to go. We're going to be happy, and we're going to come contemplate our own existence. He'll be reclining the whole day, flight. You're going to break out your Western app and be like, isn't this what you guys do here? They're going to be like, what is that in your hand? It's my phone with my app. To to mock what you guys do we don't do that how do you know that's legit uh, as soon as they get on the plane they're gonna recline the seat and bump into the guy behind them look at my app <laughs> yeah it tastes like what do i care i'm gonna die i won't, I won't remember this disrespectful act of reclining i paid for this seat i'm gonna get all extra inch that i can get all right, this is not fair. We can't make fun of Tate with, with him not here. Well, we're making fun of you. Trip. And you're at. No, I'm not reclining, though. We never asked um, Taria if she reclines. Uh-oh. On the uh, oh. Uh, Yes, I recline. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Wow. Um, I do. Is that a bad wow, thing? Oh, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm actually very surprised. You get very judged that. around here if you recline on a plane. So... <laughs> Well, typically I have enough room to recline. You have enough no, room. No, you don't. Think mm -hmm. about the person behind you. Yes. Have you ever tried to you work on your laptop? That you're taking. It, you got a golden rule, it, Taria. It's a, called the golden rule. Okay, so maybe because most of the time I'm in economy comfort. So there's enough room. The person in front of me reclined. I recline. No, still mm -hmm. not. We have enough. a mantra: decline the recline. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I, I believe that's an app. I think I we need to make t-shirts. <laughs> decline the recline. I like decline that. Decline the recline. <laughs> you're always going to remember that now when you go on a plane. You're going to go and you're going to say decline the recline. You're not going to do it. <laughs> do your plane, do your, does your plane recline, Scott, the one you fly on your own? Can, can the passengers recline? Uh, no. No. There's not that but kind you know, of room. You know what's great? You know what's great, Mike, is that when, you, uh, when you're flying it and like you're the only one in the plane and you put on autopilot, right? You get on autopilot, but then you take your seat and you slide it all the way back and you have total, absolute leg room, more leg room than you could ever imagine in a plane. <clears throat> uh, maybe first class leg room, right? Even if there's nobody behind you. If it's behind you, it's going to be rough, okay? Because it's not that big of a plane. But that said, most of the time I fly by myself. So... I can just, like, when I flew to uh, Michigan, Matt, I had that seat all the way back. I was just enjoying the view the whole way. Would you ever get up and walk to the back of the plane, like, that much, that brave? Like, it's on autopilot? You'd if, walk am I going to get to get up and walk to the back of my plane? Well, it's on autopilot. It. Well, all I got to do is go like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm like there. So I'm not sure I need to get up and walk to the back of the plane. If I bend my arm a little bit further. Wait, there's no privy? There's no toilet on the plane? No, no, no. Ooh. How big of a plane? Jeez, Mike. I think you're limited on how far you can fly with a little privy, right? You need to. Well, the uh, the plane has a fuel econ uh, a fuel range of like four hours and 45 minutes. I wouldn't recommend that. The, uh, the lo longest I've ever flown was uh, three hours and like three hours and five minutes. So that wasn't too bad. Not a lot basically, of basically, you're just saying you have a bladder infection. <laughs> oh, a bladder infection? Why is that? <laughs> not healthy to, it's not healthy to keep it in that long. Kick of four hours. Oh, I didn't go four hours. I went three hours. To Michigan? No, I stopped. I, I got to stop and get oh, gas. Man. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I, I stopped to get gas. And then when you get gas, you go inside, use the restroom, and keep on going. But if, if you need to go, I mean, you're not going to have any privacy, but, you know, there's a porta potty, John things you can take, and, you know, diapers. Diapers? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no worries. Do what you got to do if that's your problem. <laughs> you know when you go to truck stops they usually have like really good food do you guys like on planes when they land is it like a really is it like really good food when you land the planes at these locations okay well it depends on the airport and uh because not every airport has uh foods but uh, uh restaurants but there are i mean the airports are known for having pretty good food in fact there's um one outside of atlanta on the northeast side of atlanta that is like a fan favorite. You go there, you stop, uh, good food, and you keep on going. But, yeah, you know, most of the time, no. I'll tell you what happens, though, Mike, is you land, you tell them, hey, put fuel in the, the plane. You got a crew car. They toss you the keys to some some old, you know, I don't know, 1987 Lincoln Mercury. You drive it around town, maybe a van. You drive it to where you got to go. You bring it back. You go get your food. Maybe top it off if you need to. Put a couple bucks in it. But it was pretty cool. One day I landed and I had the uh, the crew car for about two hours when I went and looked at some land. So oh, that's cool. that was pretty cool. Yeah, but they're well, all I think the comments. Well, I think I think good. next I think next week we have our roundtable discussion of Mike Zano. <laughs> what, what what truck stops are you going to for good gourmet food? That's the tip <laughs> yeah. of the week. Next that's, week. That's definitely a tip, tip of the of week. The week. <laughs> Well known he for likes that. the showers. The well known fact these truckers they're not gonna stop unless they get good food. Well they can get a food unless they find good. I've been to a truck stop. I've seen the health of these truckers. Laura, look at this new app I got. It's called a wee croak. Let's go to the truck stop. We got nothing to lose. <laughs> Jeez, I that is the worst like impression of the poor guy I've ever seen in my life. And I, and I apologize to all, everyone in Boston listening. All right. And, and to truck drivers. <laughs> all right. So speaking of good food, I got to run. I got, I got to go. It's, it's almost lunchtime here. I got to break my intermittent fast. Thanks everybody. Bye.
Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttaub.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.